So deafness is the most common form of sensory impairment in humans and frequently of genetic origins. So there's really a big need medically to understand what goes wrong in patients who suffer from the disease. And of course, also from the basic science standpoint, we really try to understand how the body can perceive sound signals and transmit them in the language of the brain, which are electrical signals. So our laboratory really tries to understand the mechanisms, how we perceive sound and defects in this process that lead to deafness. And um, to do this, we really have taken a genetic approach because deafness is so prevalent in the human population. About one in thousand children is born deaf and about 50% of the cases of deafness are uh, of genetic cause. So if the parents have uh, affect the gene, the children will inherit it and also suffer from the disease. And so we have taken then the route to identify genes which cause deafness and study their function. And one of the really holy grails in auditory neuroscience has been to identify the machinery which converts the mechanical signals, which are the sound wave signals, into electric signals. And in our recent study, we identified a key component of this machinery. And this is a protein. It has a name which doesn't say much to the general audience, but the hearing researchers know it is called TMHS. This is a protein which is highly expressed in the sensory cells for sounds deep in your ear. We have this inner ear structure where the sound is really converted into electric signals. So there are these specialized cells, the hair cells, are they called? And these hair cells express this protein TMHS. And what the study showed is that TMHS is really right at the heart of the process which converts the mechanical into the electric signal. And um, mutations in this gene we showed affect this process directly so that you can't convert the mechanical into an electric signal anymore and that leads to deafness. So I think one value of the study um, that we just published is really the identification of um, the cause, uh, what this gene does, and the cause of the disease, uh, the mutations, why they cause a particular disease phenotype. I think there's a second aspect of the study which is quite interesting, and that is even though these sensors in the ear, these hair cells, already do not function very well at birth. Um, we showed that when you go now into the ear postnatally in the newborn and introduce a healthy copy of this gene, you can actually restore the function of the hair cells. Now this was done not in humans but in an animal system, but it in principle shows that even for some causes of deafness where um, the disease already manifests in the embryo where you could hardly see how you could intervene, there may be a therapeutic window postnatally where you can interfere with disease mechanisms.